Hello, welcome to a new edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today I thought we'd take another look at our old friend the Star Battle Puzzle. Uh, it's a big favourite of mine, the Star Battle, because um, well, it's got some very elegant logic and it's got some really simple rules. So just a reminder of the rules, what we have to do in this particular puzzle is we have to put two stars in each row, in each column, in each irregularly shaped area uh, in such a way that no two stars touch each other even diagonally and that's it that's all the rules now this puzzle's been sent in by Jonas Glein the fantastic German puzzle maker and a very fine solver as well um, and he sent me a couple of puzzles actually and this one he said was designed for a book of sort of relatively simple star battle puzzles um, and got rejected on the basis it was a bit too difficult for the book so I don't know how difficult that's going to make it, um, but we're going to see. Uh, now, if you want to have, have a go at the puzzle, you can do. Just click on the link under the video. That'll take you to our software. You'll see exactly what I'm seeing, and you can solve the puzzle yourselves, or you can just watch me solve it. Now, uh, the way I like to do these is I'm going to use red. Uh, make a cell red if it's got a, a star in it, and green if it definitely doesn't have a star in it. And then I quite often will shade other things as well if I can identify that you know, two cells must contain one star, then I'll typically use a different colour to notate that. So, let's try and do this now. Um, the f okay, well, if, I mean, obviously the first thing that one's eyes are drawn to is this plus-shaped area in the centre. So, Zoom. I mean, Jonas is a very, very good setter, so I imagine this is here for a reason. So we know we know there must be two stars in each of the shapes of this plus-shaped region. So we know there are eight stars in the highlighted yellow area altogether. So I'm just wondering whether we can use the 2x2 two two trick to restrict this shape a little bit. Now what's a 2x2 two two trick? Well it's simply the case that in any 2x2 two two area of a star battle puzzle there cannot be more than one star because obviously if we were to try and put a star here and say here these two stars would touch one another diagonally so let's just fill in some uh, some of this shape and see see what we get to so that, there could be a maximum of four stars in the shaded areas and we've still got to put another four stars into the plus shape in order to get to eight stars altogether. Yeah, okay, so we are going to see something here. Um, let's carry on shading and you'll see what I mean. So we can put two more stars in the purple areas. So that means in these outside areas here, there must be a star in one of these areas in order to get to our eight stars in total. Now, and this is this is lovely because I could have started um, just by going down the columns to make four by four areas, and because this shape is symmetric, in essence, what this means it's quite cool, isn't it? Because let me show you. We'll see based off what I've shaded here, all of these cells must be green, i.e. they cannot contain a star. And the reason for that is obviously if there was a star in either of these two cells, there could not be a star where there needs to be in one of these two cells. But because of the symmetry here, uh, I can actually... I know there must be a star in one of these two squares and there must be a star in one of these two squares as well. So let's fill in all of these star shapes and all of the green cells that I think must arise. And there we go. Let's make that blue as well. Just So we've created a pretty picture and actually we can go a little bit further like that. So we get to this position. Still no actual stars in the grid, but eight uh, eight areas that must contain stars. Right, okay, and now let's look at this irregularly shaped area on the right hand side. We know that this area contains two stars and we know that a two by two area can contain a maximum of one star. So there's a maximum of one star in this area, 
So this gets us our first star, and we are up and running. And therefore, this is a star. Uh, all of that must be green. And we've now got, uh, in this row, look, we've got one star here and one star in one of these two squares. So we get a bit more, a bit more logic we can do. Must be it. So we've got loads of funny areas now that are left. Ah, I suppose we can do something with this this area though. Again, our two by two trick. This area can contain a maximum of one star, therefore there must be a star in this area too, which means there's no star in the two cells above it. And now we've got if we look at the final two columns and count the number of stars we've got, we've got one two, three, four. So there can't be any more stars, which gives us another... Oh, I was about to say there must be you know, one star here and one star here, but that's not right, because this area sticks out over on the left-hand side. So that is a bit more complex than I was thinking it would be. Um, right, okay, so what is the next step? Uh, I haven't spotted it yet. You go, ah, okay, yes, I have done now. So there's one star here and one star here. So there's no star in either of those squares, and therefore no star in those positions in row two of the grid. Now, Let's have a look at the bottom part of this grid. So if we cut the grid off here, we know that there must be eight stars below this imaginary line because there are four rows. And I've identified three of those eight stars, so there must be five more. And, ah, yeah, okay, and in this area, let me highlight it, in that area, how shall I highlight it in blue maybe well it's not terribly clear but in the, in that area I just highlighted there, there can be a maximum of two stars so that gives us five stars so in this area here this area this blue area down here there must be three stars exactly and in this area there can be a maximum of two stars so, this area contains one star. That is quite complicated. But let's note that. I'll go back to white there. So, there's one star in this light blue area here. Now, that means, I guess, that there is exactly one star in all of these squares at the top that form the rest of this funny shape. Um, so I'll make that purple. So now, I'm, can we just take a look at the first three columns of the grid where I need to put six stars in the first three columns. Now I can put two in here, there's going to be one in here, so that gives me three. There's one in this area, that's four. So there needs to be two more stars in this 3x3 three three block here. Now we know that the purple area can only contain one star, so this square is a star, and that's a reasonably involved piece of logic, but quite nice. And now look, we have a star here and a star in one of these two squares, so this square can no longer be a star, and neither can this one. And we've got two stars now in row 3, so neither can that be a star. And so, that, so there's a star in one of these two positions, a star in one of these four cells that are light blue down here. No stars in those squares because of the column logic. And I don't know why these are different colors. They should be the same color. Um, maybe that color. So avoid any OCD issues. So what can we do next? 
you can see in this bottom left area I'd love to be able to put more in here but actually there could be two stars in column one or there could be a star here and just one, one star in this area so it's not desperately clear to me that I can resolve that immediately I wonder if I can do more with the plus shape let me just think about this now so let's just think about this for a moment there is there is some sort of circularity going on isn't there um, so I'm just wondering for example if we, if we come across here we know there's a star in one of these two squares now if I try and put that star here that that breaks the puzzle I'll show you why if there is a star here you can see that neither of these two squares can be stars therefore because we've already got two stars in the row now if that's the case let me show you uh, green that would force greens into both of those squares and therefore we now know well what do we know we know this square here is a star and this square here is a star now unfortunately I need to put a star in one of these purple cells that was the logic we discovered at the beginning so I now can't do that so actually that does not work this cannot be a star now I wonder if that's going to does that hold by symmetry that we cannot put a star here either I think it does I think it does let me show you what I mean if I try and put a star here what happens so we get this cell would be green these two cells would both be green because we've now got our two two stars in this area which would mean that you can see this is not going to work well hopefully you can see it this would, this is obviously a star here I'm going to have to now put a star here and here which is going to give me three stars in this row so actually there is a symmetrical trick going on here and we're going to have to place all of these stars like this now does that crack the puzzle it gives us another star here which gives us another star over on the right hand side another star here uh, are we there now uh -huh. I don't think that we're quite there yet even so can I do do I have to do more with the pluses is that the trick One, two, just think about this for a second. Hopefully you can't hear the children screaming in the background. They are quite off-putting um, when I'm trying to record a video. Which I can put some more green in there as well. Ah, no, 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 I know how to do it. Look, this square, this square cannot be, um, this can't be a star let me show you why if I put a star in there it would make these two squares both green and now look what happens I have to put a star in both this square and this square because of what I've just done like that and that is going to force these two squares to both be stars and obviously we cannot have stars that touch each other diagonally so there's a sort of you know propagation along the diagonals here so this square is not a star now once this square is not a star all of a sudden I might be able to make some more progress with with this funny area at the bottom because now I know there must be a star in one of those squares and there must be a star in one of these squares here and that's going to allow me finally to get 
make a bit of progress, I think. Oh, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to rule out that one, because that one I think has to be real. Um, and therefore that's going to be a star, this is going to be a star, this is going to be a star, and this is going to be a star. And now I think we are starting to cook with gas. We've got our two stars in this column, which means this gives us a star. We can rule out the star here. I need two stars in this funny area at the top. So that means we must do that in this order. Um, we've got two stars here. Two. I need to put two stars in column three. Well, the maximum number of stars I can put in these two squares is one, because this is all part of the same L-shaped area we identified earlier. So this must be a star at the bottom, which actually resolves that this is a start as well. And now I've got two stars in the last row of the grid. I've got two stars in that. And there we go. So I think that this will be the correct solution. So I can see why this was rejected from a, a book of beginner star battle puzzles because, well, I'm not sure whether the way to solve it was the way I did, which was by continually interrogating this central plus shape. But that was certainly quite difficult um, and very interesting, as usual, from Jonas. So thanks very much for sending us that. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.